What's up, everyone? It's Monday, December 16th, which means only four more days until Cats is in movie That's theaters. That's right. And yes. we are here at Broadway.com. I'm Paul Wontor. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And speaking of cats, yes, we got the kind of the leader of the pack here. I think so. Uh, Robbie yeah. Fairchild, Robbie Marcus Fairchild, Trapp, Tony nominee Robbie Fairchild. We're so excited! It Can't premiered wait. tonight's the premiere. It's That's a very right. big, very big yes. day in the life of Robbie Fairchild, and we're really mm -hmm. excited that he is here. So we will get to him. But first, today's top five. Someone new is joining the Wicked Fam tonight. Yes, we are talking about Shoba Narion, who is joining the blockbuster Broadway production this evening, December 16th, and she's going to be playing the role of Nessa Rose in the gargantuan Broadway hit. A.K.A. Uh, Elfie's sister. A.K.A. Elfie's sister. That's not a spoiler, spoiler. anymore, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's other things you could say to spoil, but right. we won't. Uh, Narion succeeds Giselle Jimenez in the role, who played her final performance last night. Um, Narion was previously seen on Broadway in Natasha Pierre in The Great Comet of 1812. Of course, she also appeared as Eliza in the national touring production of Hamilton for a while. Mm -hmm. She joins a current Wicked cast that includes so many Broadway favorites and people we love, including Hannah Corno, Jenna Claire Mason, Jake, Boy uh, Jake Boyd, Riley Costello, Jamie Jackson, Michael McCormick, and Nancy Opal. So go check out Narion playing Nessa Rose in Wicked on Broadway. Casting has been announced for this world premiere musical. Ryan, this musical sounds really good. It does. So and it's called Gun and Powder. It is premiering at the <laughs> Signature Theater in Arlington, Virginia on January 28th. It starts uh, through February 23rd. Now, um, so the big news is that we found out Saleha Pfeiffer and Emmy Raver Lampman are both starring yes. in the show. Now, this is a show. It's written by, I found out something bonus. So Angelina Sherry wrote the book and lyrics, music by Ross Bauman. Angelina wrote this about her aunts, like her, oh, her great aunts really? or something. Yeah. So they were real life twin sisters, Mary and Martha Clark, African-American twins who passed themselves off as white to help um, settle their mother's sharecropper debts. And apparently they were also notorious outlaws, she says on her oh website. Oh my gosh. I'm so already, this sounds, like, this sounds really cool, right? Also in the cast, Donald Weber Jr., Dan oh. Tracy, and Marva Hicks. All talented. Oh, I can't and wait. this is directed by Robert O'Hara, who oh, directed Slave, Slave Play. Play. Right. We said at the same time. <laughs> uh, this sounds like something worth a drive to yeah, Virginia. No or if kidding. you live there, you just Hop well, that's still it. a drive. You have to drive you to well, Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to get Do they have there. mass transit there? Anyway, no. just go see it. Gun <laughs> and powder. Yes. And a big star is going to help celebrate a big star. We are talking, <laughs> <laughs> big star number one we're talking about is Cindy Lauper. Oh. Uh, she is going to be giving a very special performance at Roundabout Theater Company's annual gala, 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 gala however <laughs> we, yes. Uh, They're going to be honoring the other big star, and that is Tony winner Alan Cumming. Oh. He is getting the award for excellence in the theater, which... Very appropriate. Uh, this will be having at the Ziegfeld Ballroom on March 2nd, 2020. So this is a ways away at 7 p.m. Uh, of course, Lopper appeared alongside Coming in Roundabout's uh, 2006 and Tony-nominated revival of the Three Penny Opera. Uh, the Roundabout 2020 Gala will also be honoring Michael Kors and Lance LaPere with the Ovation, o Ovation Award for Excellence in Philanthropy. So, Ooh. you know, I kind of want to go to that gala and ask Cindy Lauper what's going on with her Working Girl musical. I know. I'm dying for that. She came to Broadway like won a ton of Tonys with Kinky Boots. And Coffee, she tea, yes, me. Come on, come back. There better please. be a song called Coffee, Tea, and Me. That's the, if you see the movie, you'll know what that means. Notes. Anyway. And a new queen is heading to the queendom. You are speaking of Sophie Isaacs, yes. who I do Ooh. not know, but she was Heather yeah. McNamara in Heathers over in London. Mm -hmm. She will be taking over the role of Catherine Howard, which is a very good role, in the musical Six oh, yes. uh, in the West End. It's playing at the Arts Theater. She starts uh, January 21st, 2020. She will replace Vicki Manser, who is exiting to take the alternate slot in the title role of one of my favorite titles, Beautiful Call in the Carol King musical. Yeah, yes. So she'll be playing Carol King in the UK tour. Oh, um, wow. And we also, you know, Six is coming to Broadway. Cannot it starts February wait. 13th, 2020 so at the excited. Brooks Atkinson so Theater. Yes. And Paul, I know you don't want us talking about award season yet, uh, but we got another date to put in the calendar. Can we get through New Year's, please? <laughs> Catch isn't even open yet. 
These are the OCCs, the Outer Critics Circle Awards. Uh, they've announced a schedule of events leading up to their 70th annual theater is honor. Is there a gala involved? There's no gala. These are just... Oh, wait, no, there is. There's, There's a, a gala. gala dinner coming up. My mistake, yes. Uh, nominations for the Outer Critics Circle Awards will be announced on April 20th, 2020, ahead of the winners being revealed on May 11th of 2020. The recipients will be presented with their trophies at that aforementioned gala dinner on May 21st. Uh, the Outer Critics Circle is uh, an association with members affiliated with 90 newspapers, magazines, radio and television stations, internet and theater publications in America and abroad. It honors the best on Broadway, off Broadway, and off off Broadway. So they're a circle like around New York. Is that what it is? They're not, yes, they're like the, the outer circle critic of critics. Circle, yes. Not the not here in the city, but outside of Okay. It, yes. I think some of them actually live in the city. I'm sure they probably <laughs> <do>. <laughs> yeah, cheaters. Uh, yeah. what yeah. else is on the site? We have clips of the My Fair Lady. Yes, My Fair tour. Lady is on tour, starring Shireen Ahmed and Laird McIntosh. They uh -huh. are and so that you get there's footage of that beautiful production that you can watch right now. We also have a London QA with West End Girl. From the North Country Star, oh, Ka yes. what does that mean? Katie Braben. Yeah, we have that, an interview with Katie the, Braben. Yes, and the then, of course, Elaine Page on There's a new Elaine Sunday, Page. the latest of that. Yep. Uh, we have photos of the Moulin Rouge cast signing vinyls. Everyone of gets that vinyl incredible. These well, days. vinyl is hip right now. Yeah, vinyl is the in thing. Um, is there a cat soundtrack vinyl coming out on the 20th? Hopefully. Featuring Robbie Fairchild? <laughs> Fingers crossed. So. Uh, there's video of the Grand Horizons cast coming together for their Meet the Press. Um, and Tug Rice. Oh, yeah. The latest uh, five things to do this week, including cats. Did you see his drawing for cats? I did. And Hal Prince. I know. Uh, today, the memorial was today. He yes. did an incredible I mean, illustration just, for that. He's the best. Anyway. All right. It's time, Ryan. We've been yes, waiting. I have information the cats, that I need to know the right cats now. Cats movie is a real Fair thing. I we can't dreamt wait. of it. We yes. dreamt of it. We've here. been talking about it for years. We've been speaking about it. <laughs> yes. Robbie happening. Fairchild can confirm it's a real thing. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Ryan. It's my pleasure. It's time for uh, Robbie yes. Fairchild. Hey, Caitlin, tell everyone about today's guest. Yes, gladly. As we said before, guys, we have Robbie Fairchild here with us in the studio today. And yes, indeed, he'll be talking about all things Cats the movie because he's playing. Monka Strap in the movie. And I just found out that that cat has an extra U in his name, and it's not Monk Strap, like I thought for the past 24 years of my life. Guys, he earned a Tony nomination for his Broadway debut when he was in An American in Paris. He is a ballet dancer. He is amazing. We have a lot to talk about. Follow him on social at Robbie Fairchild. Leave all of those questions in the comments below. And please welcome Robbie and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you for having me. Oh, of I'm course. So what a big day for you. It is huge. It, it doesn't go you know, unnoticed. Me, so. so you've been uh, immersed in cats land. You've been doing press, right? Oh, yeah. And oh, it was uh, a seven month process of filming, right. uh, rehearsal and, and filming, and that we finished in uh, late April. So you started, I remember we announced that you were in it like last November. You were one of the, the later yes. cast members we found out about. Yes. They were looking for a monk strap. Oddly, en oddly enough, I was the one of the uh, the first three people there on the very first day. Okay. So I was the first person there, the last person to oh, leave. Oh, so how quick did you have to get this together? Oh, it was um, it was wild. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so I I've seen pictures. You you had dots all over you on the set. I saw a great picture you put on uh, social media of you and Judy Dench playing Bananagrams. Yeah, we, um, we <laughs> as you really, do, we really bonded. So the first day, uh, we were all we were all filming the whole cast. The three people who weren't used were um, Sir Ian McKellen, Dame Judy Dench, and myself. And we just needed to stand off to the side because we weren't going to be in the shot. Uh -huh. We ended up sitting in a corner that she called the naughty step. Uh, for <laughs> I kid you not, three hours, and we were doing word games. We would passing around sweets. Judy wouldn't have any of them. And, but then they brought around the ribs. Uh -huh. And she just devoured the ribs. Ribs? Like, yeah, ribs. Oh, yeah, OK. Back ribs, yeah. Yeah, it's which good you, to know. Which, Fun facts about when, Judy Dunn. Yeah, when would you find yourself in a corner with the two of them for three hours playing word games? It's insane. It was wild. Look at your life. It was bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let's talk about Monka Strap. Have, um, I, I know cats very well. I was obsessed. I've been obsessed with cats for, forever. Monkey Strap is a very important role. Yes. He, he's sort of like, I mean, old Deuteronomy, Judy Dench is obviously the leader. Yes. But really, I feel like it's Monkey Strap's kind of keeping everything running, right? I mean, More this is or important. less. Yeah. I think if you if you think of it like Alice in Wonderland and okay. um, I'm the White Rabbit, oh. if 
the White Rabbit was leading Alice around to all the different characters she was going to meet throughout the story. Right, because you really are sort of the narrator in a lot yeah. of ways. You tell a lot of the stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the the second in command when when Dame Judy's not there. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so Cats. It's a musical. Now it's Happening. a movie. A lot of people couldn't believe. I was one of them. I was like, "There's n this is this is going to be a movie." I was kind of <laughs> shocked. I don't know why I couldn't wrap my head around it. I mean, why not? Why like, not? Like, why not? It's beloved. People love this musical. The most music. seen musical in history. Right? right. It's been going forever. It has never stopped, and it's it's iconic. So, so what was it like for you wrapping your head around being on this set with all of these famous people? You have a, you know a lot of famous people now. Um, broad, not Broadway famous, like famous people. I mean, this is exciting. Was, like, yeah. like Jennifer Hudson knows who you are. Yes, and, Taylor uh, Swift and Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson. Rebel right, Wilson like, and I go to the theater all, to, all the time together. That's yeah, like you're like friends with, yeah. with her now. Well, because she's the Gumby Cat, and you you, you do her number with her. I mean, yeah. you're you're an important part of a lot of these songs. Yeah, you're all over the soundtrack. This is true. I saw that. I saw the track listing. Robbie Fairchild featuring Judy Dench. Yes, that Who, what a great me. line. That <laughs> killed me. When would you like? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Never. You're also a part of one of my favorite cat songs, Kim Skimble Shanks. Oh, this is a yeah. number. Yeah, it's a good number. Yeah. I like the train number. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, you really think of it as all these sort of uh, compartmentalized songs, right? Because mm -hmm. Cats is all about the heavy side layer. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a tire in the movie. I'll find out. <laughs> but, you know, in the show, they went up the tire. They picked a one to go up the tire. I'm not going to tell you who. You'll find out if you don't already know. Um, but and you so you sort of inter you meet all the cats and then yeah. and then you sort of emotionally I mean I I remember when I was a kid actually being really invested in it it's very easy to sort of to sort of uh, make it seem very trivial yeah but it actually is sort of deep it's, what, it's what's happening here it's a beautiful story about inclusion and and yeah. community and forgiveness right and those are kind of some things we get lost in today's sure society, you know? yeah so yeah it's, um, it feels timely and yeah and one thing we did with the um, with the movie is we we added a screenplay. So right. some of the maybe more obscure plot lines mm -hmm. in the T.S. Eliot poetry are threaded through a little bit more. It's a little bit more accessible to, for everybody to understand what's oh, cool. happening. Right. Um, and and in, in the musical, the stage version, they see um, they direct everything to the to the audience. Yep. But since we don't have that, we use Victoria the White Cat mm. as the newcomer. So she sees you see everything through her eyes. Um, yeah, I think it's effective. That's clever. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, so, what was it like on set? Because, like I said, you're wearing it, it, a lot of so the so the cat fur was all added in post production. Post. Yeah, um, right. Like there were you, there was no fur on set. No, no fur, no <laughs> fur. So you're for, wearing what? For, for the traditionalists, you will appreciate that okay. we were still wearing unitards, and uh, they were covered in wires and sensors and battery packs. Uh -huh. uh, and you would plug in every morning, download. Okay, and then. Same thing at night, and if you stayed around to watch your information downloading, you'd see all your points dancing on a screen, and you go, "Oh my god, that's a body, and that's actually me." I can tell. Oh, that that's, that's so me. crazy! It was wild. Um, and the thing is, we we were in for three and a half months, two hours of cat school a day, and and training really hard. We would have ballet class at six forty five in the morning. Like it was no joke. Um, so everything that you see is is stuff we worked our butt off uh, to achieve. The CGI's. Um, takes away 10%, all it does is take 10% of your image away and fill it in with fur. Okay. So you are seeing our bodies doing what we were doing that day. Mm -hmm. The CGI just does the uh, new fur technology. Which of the stars was funniest to have in ballet class? Especially for you being a trained uh, former New York City ballet star. Well, um, the big, big stars didn't take ballet class. Okay. Truth be told. Okay. Um, but we did have a moment where uh, uh, Lori Davidson, who plays Mr. Mistopheles, mm -hmm. in the movie, he's not a dancer. Okay. Uh, he's a magician, right. uh, a clumsy magician. Okay. Uh, but he was so immersed in it, and he wanted to, he wanted to do it all. So he was in between at bar, um, me and Francesca Hayward, who is mm -hmm. a principal dancer with the yep. uh, Royal Ballet. And it, <laughs> it was just the three of us in class. And uh, I think he, he left quickly soon after bar started. But it was, it was really fun to get to share that with him. And, and that was it. Andy Blankenbuehler did the choreography. Yes. Right. Yes. Which is which is incredible. Yeah, which is which is great because he knows the show so well. Mm -hmm. He knows Jillian Lynn's choreography yeah. so well um, that it wasn't a, a massive departure. Mm -hmm. However, uh, they got uh, every sort of uh, dance style in there. There's mm -hmm. there's 
crumping, voguing, hip hop, tap, ballet, jazz, contemporary, capoeira, um, parkour. It, wow. Literally everything. Cool. Everything's in there. Cool. Yeah. So who vogues? Um, one of the cats. <laughs> one seen of the, the background. Cat. <laughs> you've seen the background. So what did you? So when the trailer came out, obviously it made huge news. Oh yeah. Right. And everybody had a reaction to it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like 70% of the reactions, I was like, do you not know what Cats is? Like, that was my immediate reaction. I was yeah. like, are you not aware of what this... I think there's like literally no like idea. people... It made, it made me feel really small about Broadway. Because I was like, really? You didn't know what Cats was all this time? It, it was quite shocking that yeah. people didn't, didn't realize that they were human about, cats right, singing, dancing and singing dancing right that's what they are yeah yeah and a little scary a little sexy a little fun yeah. a little all those things yeah yeah to, to be honest i it didn't freak me out but i think i was so steeped in the world for seven months uh -huh. that um i knew what my face was going to look like however right. that was stage one of cgi yeah um and it's gone through about four different stages right. now so it's it's very highly developed now I think the reason why it's so, you know, when Avatar came out, everyone yeah. was like, ooh, what's right. that? I'm not going to see <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. I think Avatar did pretty well as a movie. Right. Right. Um, and it's just because it's new technology that's different to the eye. Tom Hooper, the director, wanted your face to be what he sees on camera. Uh -huh. Because as soon as you make the whole thing computer generated, you lose the human aspect and the human emotion, mm -hmm. the way you react and, and all of that, the eyes. So it's the first time that there's a computer generated body. But not the face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And Tom Hooper, who of course directed the Lima's movie, he, yeah. he kind of knows how to King make speech. Yeah. I just love his style. I love his movies. Yeah. Was it exciting for you to um, get to be on screen and to get to dance in a movie like this? It was absolutely surreal. I remember seeing singing Old Deuteronomy for the first time um, in front of Dame Judy and Sir Ian, and I McKellen. McKellen. I I was wearing an, a sweater and I stretched out the neck because I just kept twisting my <laughs> finger and I was so I was so nervous um but it was you know every everybody was so supportive and so happy to be there yeah we knew we were making something wild you know um it was it was truly truly special and I think one of my favorite parts of the movie um is the Jellicle Ball yeah I love the Jellicle Ball uh because in general but I'm yeah, excited to see what it is in the movie it's really good yeah yeah I haven't seen the CGI version uh -huh. I only saw the un CGI but it looks so good that music is so yeah. exciting that's like my favorite and they um they recorded an 80 piece orchestra mm, wow. so i mean this is it's just going to be a, a cats on steroids you've never seen <laughs> it like this steroids. before yeah. yeah yeah um what what was it like though on the set was there a lot of like laughing and was there was there a lot of i mean because th there is something inherently ridiculous about oh. what you're all doing oh. so i would love to see like all the behind the scenes stuff Rebel Wilson was so funny. We were talking recently, and she goes, you know, I came into cat school, and everyone was just taking it so seriously. <laughs> and she was, like, looking around for someone who was just going <laughs> to realize that sniffing somebody's butt is, is an odd thing to do. Right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Not that that was what we always did. Um, but my first, my first time during cat school was, um, uh, it was next to Sir Ian McKellen, and the way cats greet each other is how, or how we were learning was they get four inches away from each other's uh -huh. faces and just smell and gather all this mm. information. So I'm four inches away from Gandalf, right. just like, <laughs> and then it's been 15 seconds of sniffing. So I decide, okay, now's the time we're going to tap noses because you tap wow. noses if you like each other and then you start rubbing up on each other. So I go to tap noses with Gandalf and he goes, no, 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 no. I'm not ready yet. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I go back to just like smelling his face, and uh, eventually he liked me and tapped. We tapped noses and then started rubbing up. But it was funny because it, he was the only person who would actually hiss at somebody if he didn't like them. Oh, we were we, we would we were just nice people, so we were thinking, oh yeah, we'll tap noses and rub. But he was like, if he didn't oh. like you, so I felt really honored that you know he tapped <laughs> That's my amazing. nose. Amazing. Yeah. That's why he's Sir Ian McKellen. Oh yeah. He wasn't he was, just gonna. Play along with everyone. He, oh, he was fully in it. A full hiss. Uh huh. Like, a, well, wow. Yeah. So you you saw him hiss at people. Oh yeah. Did he hiss at like Taylor Swift or Jennifer Hudson? No, or? no, no. <laughs> he had respect for the divas. Yeah, yeah, for the divas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So what was it like with like Taylor Swift? I mean, Taylor, this is like a crazy project that she's involved with. Yeah, yeah. So um, and obviously the song, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful ghost. Beautiful ghost. So she's. 
such a mega star. Yeah. And she is one of the most down to earth humans. Yeah. She is so kind. We had a, a, a get together last night before the premiere and, mm-hmm. and she remembered all of our names uh-huh. and um, she was so excited to be a part of it. She came on set when it wasn't her day of filming just to watch. She was just cool. immersing herself in the whole uh-huh. thing. And um, she was really nice to me and I, I, I went up to her while we were filming McCavity and just to like, you know, play around and have a little joke. She goes, McCavity's not there. Like so many times in the song, right? <laughs> and so I go up to her and I said, so Taylor, um, Tom, this next take uh, wants me to interject. Where is he? You know, like, where oh, did he, he go? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And she goes, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, just do whatever you need to do. And I was like, oh, my God, that was a dad joke that was so bad. And she had no <laughs> idea it was a joke. She must think I'm such a weirdo. <laughs> we laugh about it now. You we get along. Yourself. But, you oh, yourself. Oh, like, who do I think I am? Just, like, going and cracking jokes and then bombing so <laughs> bad. <laughs> I love that. I really love that wild. so much. So tonight's the premiere. Yeah. What are you going to wear? Joseph Abood. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Have, you, have you thought really hard about it? I mean, this is a big, big Hollywood moment for you. It, it's very exciting. Um, I, have a, I have a great team who pulled some amazing looks, and I'm, I'm excited to just celebrate what we worked so hard on. Yeah. We worked we were ballet class at 6.45 in the morning. Yeah. We got picked up at 5.30 in the morning, and then we wouldn't get done until like 10.30 at night. Yeah. And we really put in the hours, and I think we made something really cool, and I hope you guys like it. That's why I think that I've noticed that on social media, even watching. Like, I remember last night, Jennifer Hudson put up a video of her, like, getting out of her car to stand in front of the Cats billboard on 7th and 49th. I was like, she was a block away. Yeah. Uh, like, she was excited to pose in front of it. And I've noticed that from a lot of the cast members. Like, there just seems like you guys, it seems like almost like a theater experience in the sense that you all really bonded in that way. Did it feel like oh, that yeah. on the set? Oh, it was a full on tribe. Yeah. Um, and, we, you know, the hours were insane. Mm-hmm. And um, the amount of takes, Tom Hooper is such a perfectionist, mm-hmm. and I am too, so I was like, thank God, we're going right. to do this until we get it right. right. Um, but you would do at least 30 takes before he would switch the angle. Wow. And whether you're singing, whether you're Jennifer Hudson singing Memory, mm-hmm. um, or you're some of us dancers spinning and turning and jumping, and you really had to figure out, okay, well, um, you had to go up to him and say, I only have like maybe five more jumps in me left. Right. And, right. and, uh, so you would, you would navigate it, but we, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not performing eight shows a week, like on Broadway. And I have so much respect for, mm-hmm. um, the cast of cats who's out right now. Um, but it was, it was a whole, it was, it was another beast in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you, when you have those kind of digging in the trenches, just like on Broadway, you, you really band together and it was really special. I love that. Yeah. I love that. What, are you going to go see it in, in theaters? On, it, so it comes out Friday. Are you going to go watch it with regular people? Um, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm too nervous. I'm too nervous. I, I'm, I'm going to go to a screening after, after the premiere um, uh, on Wednesday and with my family and friends. Oh, and fun. Awesome. It'll be fun. I love yeah. it. Hey, Caitlin, people yes. have questions about cats. What do they want to know Ooh. from Robbie? Yes, we do. So Lacey wants to know, what was your first experience with cats? Did you watch that VHS? Did you see it in right. real life? What was your first experience? Okay, so when I was about eight or nine, mm-hmm. um, I lived in Salt Lake City, and my parents got the subscription to the national tour. Sure. Um, all, the, all the tours that would come through, and I remember thinking, I want to be the stuff, please. Um, um, and then I saw the latest revival, yep. and I thought to myself, Who's this monka strap guy? Yeah. I really dug him, and I was like, he's really have... commanding. Oh yeah. yeah, princely, regal. Yes. Um, and I was like, if I ever do cats, that's the one monka I want to play. Okay, so you yeah. hide it. Yeah, like, that's and the it's one. and it's interesting because the big dancing role in the movie for a guy is monka strap, right? And Mistopheles is is the is the actor, right? Mm-hmm. Slash magician, right. right, right, right. Yeah, so it felt like a perfect fit. Monkey Shop also battles McCavity, right? Isn't that part of the... There's yeah. all these layers. Yeah, to, yeah. To, you can write like a, a oh. fan fiction about these cats. Oh, there's <laughs> books upon books. I know. Yeah. I know. There's Yeah, anyway. Yeah, me and Idris Elba just like going at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so Corey wants to know, how does it feel to kind of see where your career has gone over the past few years? How obviously you're in the like center stage in ballet world and then you're in Broadway and now you're in the Cats movie. How yeah. is that? Yeah, that was a big yeah. leap for you when you did an American in Paris yeah. and you were spectacular yeah. and Thank it was you. kind of like, is this guy going to do this? And then he was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. And now um, look at you. So the one thing someone, uh, I think the greatest thing someone ever told me after the show of an American in Paris, they said, 
This is my eighth time seeing the show. I love it so much. I just bought my first tickets to go see the New York City Ballet. Oh. And, and I realized that being a part of the Broadway world, you had access to so many other different audience members who wouldn't go to Lincoln mm -hmm. Center and go to the ballet. Yeah. And, and the guy who got me into dancing was Gene Kelly. Well, we didn't have enough money to go to New York City or, or the, we, would, we saw him in the movies. Um, and granted, when I, when I first found out about him, he had passed away. Um, and so my only access to someone like him was through the movies. Mm. And I left the ballet company, the New York City Ballet, um, almost three years ago now. Yep. And because I wanted to, um, if I could, be a part of that lineage. Um, if you don't have somebody to look up to, um, it's hard to realize that that's a passion for you. And when this whole Boys Dance 2 happened thing with Good Morning America, yeah. um, you you really need you need people to uh, hold on to and look to for um, inspiration or or not that I'm saying I'm inspiring but I'm meaning I want to be a part of the legacy of dance that sure. holds the hands of the different generations yeah. and brings people together. Um, so that is that's what I love about this whole moment. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting. Yeah, I love that. Cool. Let's do one last question because I love it so much. Mickey wants to know if you could create your own cat's name. Oh, no, be? that's so hard. <laughs> I have no idea. The naming of cats is a, a difficult, it's an matter. Art difficult form. matter. It's a very so difficult this, matter. So we'll, it isn't just one of those. It's an art form. Yeah, I mean, you have to like, this is very serious stuff. This is not like a joke. No, no, you can't just like. These cat names. You meditate and you, you find it. <laughs> I will tell you, it was really funny. Um, so my dog's name is Griswold. Oh. Um, and we call him Grizz. Because of the vacation movies? Yes. Is it really it's a Christmas present to myself. Oh, cool. So um, when... I found out I was doing cats. Everybody was like calling him Grizabella. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not one of those people who like got a cat and named it Grizz right. for the like, yeah. musical I'm doing. Right. It just happens to be the same nickname. So you won't be living with a monk strap in the future. You won't be getting one for home. I'm, I'm allergic to cats. So <laughs> same. I will love from afar. <laughs> I am allergic to cats, but I am not allergic to the musical cats. Thank you. I love cats and I'm so excited. I'm actually getting to see it tomorrow. So I'm very excited, and it comes out. Everyone can go see it on Friday, Friday. you guys, and the soundtrack comes out, um, and it's super exciting. Yeah. I mean, this is a big musical event, it and is. everyone in it is pumped, and they all worked really hard, and they want you to see it. Yeah, they and I'm like thrilled it. for you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you want to do more movie musicals? Oh yes. Yeah, line them up. Bring it on, baby. Bring it on. <laughs> How yeah. about another American in Paris movie? Done. Sign me up. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have Thank a you. great time tonight. Thank you very and much. And congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. I lied about it being every day because we're not going to be here tomorrow because it's our holiday party. But we will be here on Wednesday. We talk to Emily Bautista and, and Anthony Festa of the Miss Saigon National Tour.